Ooh wee, Street Fighter 6 is here and we busting on the scene, boy. Even if you aren't new to fighting games, picking a character and going through the move list trying to learn Street Fighter can be pretty daunting. But it doesn't have to be. So you pick the character, you loaded up the training room, so where do we start? First, I need you to understand that Street Fighter matches are really just a conversation between you and your opponent. Your moves are your words, and simply being able to say every word in your dictionary or in your move list doesn't make you a great conversationalist. What is the core conversation happening in Street Fighter and what are the type of moves that you have to be able to communicate in it? In this video, I'll be using Jamie and Sorry, my mentor. I have failed you. <laughs> in his move set to demonstrate that conversation and how you should be thinking about playing Street Fighter with the tools that you have. With all of that being said, it's time to wake up and open your eyes to what really matters in your Street Fighter matches. You don't see it? He moves right there! Wait, wait! Right there! Right as I'm sitting down! The first question you want to establish in any Street Fighter match that you have is the question of are you mashing buttons or not? In the case of Jamie, his standing medium punch and drive rush heavy normals actually translate to are you mashing buttons or not? And here I'll show you why. If your opponent blocks one of these moves and you take your time and you feel that move afterward with a crouching light punch, it will interrupt your opponent if they're pressing a button. Another way of thinking about this is that anytime one of these moves land and you see them follow it up with a crouching light punch, they're checking to see if that person is button mashing. Here in this example on the screen, Honda is set to do his fastest normal, which is his crouching light punch. And in this case, it consistently gets beat out by our crouching light punch. What I need you to understand about fighting games is that this situation happens every time you land one of these moves because of the frame data of it, which means that these moves recover before the opponent recover from block stun. So you are able to act before they are able to act. This advantage on block doesn't matter if you're pressing the wrong buttons after pressing buttons that are too slow or you're mistiming that crouching light punch afterward. Experienced players that are watching you misuse this move will continue to challenge you despite knowing they're not supposed to because they either see that you can't time it properly or that you don't understand what you're using it for. Being able to reliably get that counter punch or counter hit with that crouching light punch after your plus one block moves is gonna be super important for having a consistent game plan. All right, now that you have the counter hit consistently, there's one more step that we need before we really in the money to make it count. Just landing a consistent counter hit light punch is not gonna be enough to stop people from button mashing on you. Some players won't even notice that they're getting counter hit if that's the most that you can do off of it. So the next step is to learn a basic but reliable combo conversion off of that crouching light punch that we were already expecting to get. In the case of Jamie, a basic conversion is crouching light punch into crouching medium kick and then into a special move of your choice. One thing I need to stress right here is consistency. You do not need the most damaging combo in the world, but you need to have something that you can do consistently and reliably. Now you have something that's about to completely change your experience. Having this consistency makes it so that if your opponent doesn't stop mashing buttons, they lose. Having a consistent combo is going to give you some damage. It's going to give you more screen control, pushing them towards the corner. And if you're playing Jamie, it also gives you an opportunity to get a drink in and get some resources. If they don't adapt and start blocking, you just win. There's no reason to stop doing it, you just win. This is where the conversation is gonna be over for a lot of your opponents already because some of them might not even realize that the conversation is happening. Or they might not realize that they're pressing buttons and that's why they're getting hit. Or they might know all of these things and still can't fight the urge to press a button. Now for your opponents that are there with you in this conversation, either subconsciously or consciously, we go on to the next layer. Your consistency of landing your combo after your counter hit crouching punch is going to now condition your opponent to start blocking after those plus on block moves. So now when you use those moves from earlier to ask are you mashing, if you think the answer is no, you walk up in their face and grab them. The important thing to realize here is that theoretically they could punch you out of this on your walk up to grab them. However, because you conditioned them to stop pressing buttons by using your consistent combos or counter hit combos, you get to walk up and grab them now because they're waiting for that counter hit poke. 
Now this is the core of fighting games because now you have to make a decision based on if you've conditioned them enough to go for the grab or not. This is why it's important for you to go ahead and, and establish your uh, counter hit combo game to make them stop pressing buttons first and then to be able to go for a grab later. Once you've grabbed them a few times, they're going to now have to start pressing buttons again to check you for going for that grab, which is now going to open up what we talked about at the very beginning and set up your counter hit confirm because they're trying to stop you from throwing. These are one of the interactions you should be thinking about in your Street Fighter matches. And one thing that can help you decide between going for that strike or that throw is thinking about what did my opponent do last time I put them in this situation? Have they changed anything yet? Have they corrected? Do they even know that we're having a conversation? If they haven't responded to the conversation yet, there's no reason to change. Now, if they're clearly responding to the situation that you're setting up, ask yourself, are they alternating between what they're doing? Are they doing it twice in a row, then doing another one? Or maybe you could do the same thing twice in a row. They won't expect it a third time. This is where you get into that mind game with your opponent. Now that we talked about that core conversation, let's start talking about how we could start piecing all of this stuff together. Or in other words, how can you start a conversation? It's two simple ways of setting up conversations. The first way to be able to set up this conversation is by doing either a jump in or by doing a meaty. What I need you to understand is that jump in attacks should be used with caution because they're very risky because of anti-airs, which is just your opponent being able to hit you out of the air. However, if you are able to successfully land a jump in attack, you can then go directly into your standing medium punch, which is going to start that conversation for you. So, for example, Jamie jumps in with his uh, jumping heavy punch attack, and then he lands, and then he goes directly into his standing medium punch, which is then going to set up that situation we were talking about earlier. The second thing that I want to talk about is a media. A media is basically a way of thinking about this is putting a hitbox over your opponent as they're getting up. What this does is makes it so that if they're not waking up with an invincible reversal like a DP or a super, when they try to press a button, they're going to get hit because they're getting up and trying to do an attack, but the box is already on top of their body. For example, if you're in the corner with the Jamie and you land a forward throw, you can walk up and then wait for them to start getting up and then put a standing medium punch on their head as they're getting up. This is then going to set up your media attack with your standing medium punch, which is already initiating that conversation for you. If they block the media attack, you already have the conversation set up to be able to go into the strike or the throw based on the conditioning that we talked about earlier. If the media attack hits, you can just go directly into a combo of your choice. I would recommend just go ahead and going for your typical uh, crouching confirm that you had earlier, but just simplify by taking away that medium kick. It's important to be able to hit confirm if your media hits because that combo that we used earlier won't actually combo if your counter if your crouching light punch isn't a counter hit so the reason why i say this is because if you're uh, standing medium punch meaty actually hits your crouching punch crouching light punch is not going to be a counter hit anymore so it's not going to combo into that crouching medium kick so just go ahead and simplify that and go straight from that crouching light punch because you're going to have a lot of time because of the hit stun from that standing medium punch and just go ahead and go into a special move Another thing I like to talk about while we're here are throw loops. So if you're in the corner and you throw your opponent in the corner, most characters like Jamie have a throw loop, which means that they have an advantage just enough that they could walk up and do another throw as a meaty. So if your opponent gets a button mashing, they're going to get grabbed out of whatever attack they're doing. And so their options are now to go ahead and throw back to be able to tech out of it or to go for an invincible move like an over overdrive DP or going into a super, which are gonna be invulnerable to get themselves out of that situation. If you think they're, go they're going to jump to try to get out of the throw, you can just go ahead and do a media attack instead. So here's a very strong position. It's just, you have to make sure you know the timing for getting your throw, but you do have the advantage. But ask yourself, what are they going to do? And then pick the option that beats that. Now to connect all the dots, those dry rush normals that we talked about earlier, those dry rush heavy normals, what Jamie can do is after he lands a forward throw, he can go into a mid screen media basically by using those dry rush moves. So what he does is that you do a forward throw, pushes your opponent away from you, and then you have the choice of either going for your drink or using your dry rush to go for a media, which is gonna initiate that conversation that we talked about earlier. So another nugget that I would like to put in there is that the combo enders or the moves that you use to end off your combos are going to be what you use to establish and set up another conversation. In other words, while you're getting comboed or doing a combo on your opponent, 
what you should be really paying attention to is what is going to be the question afterward what is the conversation after this combo and what determines that is based off what special move or what situation that they use to end that combo with so now let's continue the progression let's say you go ahead and you do the media situation and you start a combo with jamie after getting the hit let's say you now end that with jamie's down forward light kick or two three sits light kick which is going to be his break dancing move what this move now does is it asks a new conversation question it asks a new question what this breakdancing move really asks is does your opponent want to dp or do their super the reason for that is because this leads to a situation called a safe jump and what a safe jump does is that it provides an opportunity for you to go ahead and go for an overhead attack jump in However, it also leaves enough space for you to go ahead and block if they decide to do a wake up special in retaliation. This combo ender is amazing because it gives you an opportunity to go for another combo and to continue your offense and go straight into a conversation. While it may leave some damage on the table, it provides an opportunity for you to go ahead and start a whole nother combo, which is way better than just getting more damage in one combo. In other words, why take one combo when I can take three? If your opponent doesn't know any better and they go for an overdrive or a DP, they're completely left at your mercy for you to do a max damage combo right after. If they don't go for a DP or overdrive, you're free to go ahead and land on them with your uh, jumping heavy punch with Jamie and then go straight into your standing medium punch, which is going to set up that conversation all over again. Another thing to touch on, like we talked about earlier, if you are able to bait a DP using a safe jump, but you don't have a consistent combo that you can do after to punish it, you're not going to stop them from DPing. They're going to keep DPing because you can't make it hurt. So what's going to be important is because we've learned these things up until this point of the situation, we need to now learn a combo for when this is that situation happens that we've prepared for. So just having a basic consistent combo that you can do is going to do decent damage to punish these DPs are going to end games faster for you and stop your opponent from DPing on you because of the risk of them getting blown up for it. A basic DP punish for Jamie is going to be using his down heavy punch and then go ahead and confirming that into his down forward heavy kick which is going to be the heavy version of his breakdancing move. From there you can go into a super if you want to or just leave it at that. That is going to give you a lot of damage that's very low execution. As you become a more advanced player, what you begin to do is to swap out the combos and the things that you use in these individual conversations for better ones. But for now, it's important to just have something that's consistent and that's good for you. And then over time, as you see fit to become better, you just swap those things out to make your game plan better. One thing I like to emphasize here when it comes to combos is that what really matters is how you end them because of the fact that when advanced players are landing combos, they're trying to decide between ending the combo with the most maximum, the most amount of damage if it's going to kill or end the combo in a situation that is favorable to them that they understand and it's gonna allow them to get another combo, which they then may decide if that one's gonna kill or not. Another example of this is if you take Jamie's light DP uh, using a forward down forward light kick that is Jamie's DP, and it looks very different from that breakdancing move, but it actually leads to the same as that safe jump situation. And so if your opponent doesn't know that this also is a safe jump, they can also fall for it here, even if they know the first one. And so while they may look different and looks like completely different combos, what really matters is that they're giving you the same situation afterward. And this brings me to my point at the very top of the video of why you don't necessarily need to just have every move that your character have uh, down pat by memory as soon as you start playing the game. What's really important is understanding that what these moves do and what they're setting up for you because a lot of these moves actually say the same things in the conversation. And being able to categorize them about if they're uh, initiating that first conversation around plus frames or is it giving you the same afterward situation at the end of a combo or is it a move that you're using to take your turn these are important categories to know and to have because you start seeing them repeat themselves. You knowing how to end a combo with the breakdancing move versus knowing how to end it with the light DP doesn't really make that much of a difference. What matters is that you're able to do one of them and know what it leads to for you. Now that we've had a basic overview of how everything kind of goes together in the basic conversations that are happening from match to match, let's now take out some rounds 
uh, from Street Fighter using Jamie in real time to see what we can pull from it based off what we learned today. man that brings us to the end of the video if you learned anything today please consider leaving a like and subscribing man i'm really excited to be making some street fighter content out here but don't be sleep man i also have some guilty gear content here on the channel already please consider checking out my zato guide i think it's really good it follows my same philosophy of how i like to teach fighting games i also have some mk coming in the oven and also some tekken so please consider sticking around and i'll catch you guys in the next one